she knows the plan. Carolyn Baldwin is here, and uh, this is a full hour show. Carolyn volunteers each week on Tuesdays to come in here at this time to talk to us about our lawns and our gardens and our trees and our mulch and our fertilizer and anything else that has to do with things that grow out in the garden, including the bugs and the birds and the butterflies that show up there. <laughs> uh, if you would like to be part of this show, we would love to have you. The number is 622-9622. You can call with a question. You can have a conversation with Carolyn. Sometimes it's not a simple yes or no. Sometimes you need the longer answer so uh, again the number is 622-9622 it's garden time good morning Caroline. love good this morning, love Larry. this hour of the of the it's, week that's you always look so nice that's a nice well, thank color you. it's a becoming color to you well, thank you it's it's i always call it red and everybody goes no it's orange go, it's not really orange it's red <laughs> i would say orange too no it's closer to red it's for, a red orange okay, the, we'll, we'll, we'll split the difference for so. the listeners Viewing for the mm-hmm. viewers watching it on the streaming. I'm 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 comparing what I see with my eyes and what I see on the monitor. The monitor does look a little more orange than the than, than in, the, in real yeah. life. But right. It's you know it's it's it is it's a red orange. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. When yeah, I when yeah. depends on the lighting. Speaking you're Speaking of oranges. Speaking of. Oranges. I have a lot of them on that tree yeah. in my yard. It's yeah. Sort the, of yeah. The shared borders, tree borders yeah. the two yards. And yesterday, I started up my lawnmower for the first time mm-hmm. and, and ran over a few of them. Oh, yeah. That's, that makes quite well, an aromatic mess. Yeah, aromatic. I don't care about the mess. It yeah. p- probably feeds something, I'm thinking, right? Well, I'm sure, and they're breaking down, so, you know, it's one of those kind of things. So. Yeah, so I did want to... I didn't want to pick them up. They were probably there for a while, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, if they're still, if you pick them up and they're still heavy, they're still good. You know, if they're heavy, it means they're still juicy. I'm going to use them. This, yeah. Not the ones on the ground, but no. I'll, I'll get the ones off the tree. Pick, pick the ones. If you've got citrus out there, just speaking of citrus, on the tree and your trees are flowering, do your best to start getting that off of there. Getting the oh, ripe really? stuff off. Yeah, because it's taken energy holding those fruits on there, and they should be ripe if your trees are beginning I'd to I'd say they are. I'd say they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, especially if they are dropping. You know that those are getting riper. They're getting past that ripeness. and and get them off of there so that um, that tree can put its energy into those blooms into next year's fruit. So, you know, I have bananas. Yes. So I saw a banana recipe. Okay. I, I know you're into food. Okay. Can I tell you what it is? Sure. Have you ever heard of banana pancakes? I have. I, yeah. I never heard of them. Now, tell me if this is what you would do. They, all they do is smash up bananas, right. mix in eggs, and fry it. Yeah, well, the eggs, there it. should be some flour in there, I would think. Not this one. I no? saw it on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. It might be a flourless. Flourless pancake. Flourless pancakes. Yeah, it could be. I'm not a big banana eater, so it wouldn't be something I... Just eat the little ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be something I would tr- more than likely try for myself or, you know, the, no, not, not, not that big into bananas. Did you did you eat any of my bananas from yes. last year? Yes, I did, and now I did I did enjoy that banana I had. But like I said, to sit down and have banana pancakes. No, give me blueberry pancakes or chocolate chip pancakes or just plain pancakes, and, and we're ready to rock and roll. That yeah, you know. you know, pancakes with strawberry sa- sauce. All right, all so here's rest. my question about the the stuff you put on pancakes. Mm-hmm. In the old days, you put syrup or, or syrup, however you want right, to right. on your pancakes. Right today. If you look at the ingredients, it's mostly uh, high fructose fructose corn syrup. syrup, Okay, so why is it because it's cheaper? I mean, why don't they just use it the old-fashioned way? Oh, maple syrup's expensive. Uh, If you look in the grocery store and you find maple syrup, uh, no, well, I mean, it's a little pint bottle is probably about six or seven dollars. Okay, versus your other syrup. Now, if you look around, you can find some who've either uh, reduced the amount of high fructose. Or eliminated it at a at a sum of, and you are paying yeah, a little yeah. bit more for those. But um, yeah, go yeah, because I I buy ketchup with that high fructose corn syrup. You know, it's not a necessary ingredient. It's not good for you. That kind of sugars and stuff like. But you're that. okay or, with yeah. it. I mean, you don't mind the high fructose. You, you don't buy it the not hype to, I, I, or the anti hype. I I try not to buy it. I mean, the syrup oh, I have okay, at okay, home okay. is one without the high fructose corn syrup. Oh, okay. Same way so with my ketchup. Because some yeah, things you're okay with, like like you're you're okay with some genetically modified. Right. Stuff. I know it's going to be. It's inevitable, and I don't see where it's a, a huge problem on that. But and and. Um, 
the whole, you know, people being, oh, you got to go everything gluten free. Eh, no, not necessarily unless you're intolerant to gluten. That's what they not say. Just, yeah, not yeah. just but everybody's intolerant. No, you're not. But not there's everybody. a store going up. Joe's been talking about it. And yeah, it's, uh, Earth Fair. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And I guess they will specialize in. Oh, they're going to, ha- right, into specific diet kind of things. I'm sure they're going to cater also to those who are, are uh, you know, or have sections within where you can get all vegan, where you can get uh, non GMO, where you you can get yeah, uh, yeah. you know all organic um you know just it's you know it's one of those kind of ready for the phone sure good morning thank you for calling you're on the air with caroline yeah good morning good morning yeah good morning. sometimes i change up a little bit when i do and do pancakes at home and i'll uh-huh. put uh, like a little strawberry jam or orange marmalade on it instead of syrup right right and a lot of people will they're, yeah they'll, or they'll get the strawberries like they're in season right now and just say cut them up the night before they might put a little bit of sugar just our simple syrup on it and and pour those over or same thing with when blueberries are in season uh, yeah yeah ihop does the strawberries with the whipped cream right right and so that's yeah, it. You definitely don't need syrup when you have that. <laughs> no, that no, you won't. Good, yeah. Right, yeah. And with any of them, I think you could even do like with peaches. And, you know, when peaches become in yeah. season, is cut those up nice, get you a nice simple syrup going with those and, and just pour those over it. And like you said, with a little little uh, deal, a dollop of whipped cream on top of yeah, it, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, all yeah. set. Yeah. yeah. Perfect discussion for Fat Tuesday. All right, have a good morning. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Are you giving up anything for Lent? Do you do that? Um, I, I did years ago. I don't know. I don't I, know. I, I, my sanity, maybe, because it's the busy season at work. You're going to give up your Saturday? <laughs> my sanity. <laughs> oh, your sanity. I thought you said your Saturday. No, because it, it's my busy season at work. It's kinda, I'll probably be nuts by the end oh, of it. No. So. All right, we do have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Morning, guys. Morning. You're making me hungry. Yeah. Sorry about that. I, well, I'm going. I'm going shopping later. On, but I gotta have to buy some more bananas because my favorite breakfast is fried bananas in butter, uh. walnuts, and maple syrup. Ah. What do you put that over your and oatmeal or what, or over your on your mm-hmm. on your pancakes or on your oatmeal? I eat that straight straight out of the ah. bowl with a little milk. Just there like you it go. Is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's healthy. The walnuts are healthy. I know the bananas, the bananas are, are good for you. They say maple syrup is good for you. The maple syrup is, you know, at least it's a, a natural sweetener as long as it's actually maple syrup. And the butter, you know, everybody gets, you know, butter versus margarine and this and that. Butter, actually, at least it's a natural, you know, it's something that is not man-made. Uh, well, except yeah. that it had to be clabbered together. Um, but it's, you know, not a chemical base, so... Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of butter, I, I'm a big, big popcorn eater, mm-hmm. and uh, I've gotten away from butter, and I've been using coconut oil instead of butter, okay. which is really good, and it's uh, cholesterol-free, and it's supposed to be very healthy for you, so I'm, I hope I'm making the right move there. Yeah, I haven't done much research on the on the whole thing of the uh, coconut, coco, coconut butter kind of stuff, and... and I mean, I always thought cocoa butter was in sunscreen at one point. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it's, I, I guess it is, you know, that it's one of those kind of things. I haven't done really to see. And even um, everybody, you know, sustainabilities and things like that. I'm not all into that, uh, the step yeah. over the edge <laughs> side of it. But, you know, uh, hopefully we're not going through and, and bulldozing natural uh, plantings in order to plant these trees in order to harvest this product because it's, better than butter again it's one of the you know it's give or take you know um yeah. Yeah, a, a, a quick question on strawberries although you know yeah. strawberry time right now right and looking forward to the festival this weekend uh, the, the, the strawberry plant only yields one crop of strawberries right and then they have to start over um in florida yes in other states no um in in Florida, we do treat strawberries as an annual plant, though if you can make your plant survive through the summer, because what happens is generally disease issues. Uh, we get oh. our high humidity, so much rain that um, they succumb to insect and disease problems. In most states, the runners, because what it'll do is it'll make runners. It'll make smaller, young, you know, new plants off of the parent plant. You clip off the new plants, replant those, and continue uh, the process. And a lot of times you can do that, especially if you grow them maybe in containers uh, or yeah. up in raised beds. You can continue with that. Um, I think with the strawberry industry, it's probably, and it, and it sounds... Um, 
it sounds kind of backwards or something that I think it is actually more cost effective for them to start over with fresh plants every year is because they will put their yeah. fertilizers down their their rows they remount them if you ever notice they're covered in a in a plastic uh to get yeah. you know as a as a mulch under there um their their irrigation line goes underneath there and that you know starting over year after year is um you know i i believe for them more cost effective for the homeowner where we've got you know uh two three four dozen plants in order to have enough berries coming in at any time um yeah you can keep running you know keep your plants alive and run your runners uh you know each year yeah well we're, we're lucky in florida here we get strawberries all year round i mean they don't come from florida but wherever they come from they're they're always fairly decent so there's always a lot of strawberries in the store well there's strawberries there is actually strawberries about the one fruit that are truly are seasonal we get them here from Florida first. We get we, the first crops of strawberries always come from Florida, and then you start getting your California strawberries. But there's not a whole lot of places that shell, sell them or grow them to ship them around the country. So I mean, I know they they grow strawberries in other states, but they yeah. usually stay locally there just because the shipping of them uh, all around. So it really is. Uh, I think the California ones does extend our purchasing time on strawberries. But um, that's one fruit that really does go away, pretty much in the you know in the off season. Same with like your blackberries and blueberries. They sort of once that season is yeah, done yeah. here or anywhere you know immediately local or maybe some out of California, and then they're really they are kind of gone. Not like bananas, which are year round, or um, yeah. uh, apples and things you know, like that. Some of the, some of the strawberries that you buy, you know, they're not completely red; they're kind of whitish. Mm-hmm. Is there any way you can get those to turn red? Nope. No, oh, that's, that's I usually tri- I usually trim that way. I, when I buy a package of strawberries, I look for the ones that are the the most red, or you know, even if they're all just pink all over, um, because I will sweeten mine. I, I always find oh. that strawberries are not quite as sweet as I want. So when I cut mine up, I do use a little sugar on them. Um, and yes, I use plain old table sugar. I know okay. it's horrible for you, but uh-huh. that's okay. what I'm going to do. Thank, 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 thank. Thank you. We'll see you at the Strawberry Festival. <laughs> All right. Have a, <laughs> have a good day. All right. We are up against a break. So let's sure. take that break right now. Okay, I got some Mardi Gras music to take yeah. it out. There we go. All right. We'll be right back with Carol Ann. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accidents. On this Tuesday, partly sunny, very warm and humid with a stray shower along the coast. The high 81 at the coast, 87 inland. And patchy clouds Tuesday night, maybe some fog around late at night and into early Wednesday. Low 63 to 67. Later Wednesday, sunshine, some clouds and very warm high 82 in the coast to 88 well inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more. So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. And this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352 352- 369-9101 352-369-9101 Sunbelt Rentals Get it done, rent it now 352-369-9101 Directory. When looking for local businesses, go to hyper.directory. No need for triple W, no need for dot com, just hyper.directory. Connecting customers to local companies when it matters most. Hyper Directory is your local business directory partnered with the Ocala Chamber and Economic Partnership to bring you trust. Keeping Ocala local. Use hyper.directory, no triple W, not even dot com, just hyper.directory. Connecting customers to businesses when it matters most. 
Want to go exploring with all the comforts of home? Discover the best of both worlds at the Ocala RV Show, March 2nd through 5th at Florida Horse Park. Thursday through Sunday, discover loads of RVs, great rates. Win two $100 gift cards every day, no purchase necessary. Adults $5, kids under 16 free. Thursday, buy one admission, get one free. Sunday, free admission with blood donation to Life South Community Blood Center. $2 off for military and first responders each day. It's the Ocala RV Show. Leprechaun Soft Wash is the roof washing method that is safe and effective on shingles, tile, metal and shake roofs, vinyl, wood, aluminum, hardy board and stucco siding, driveways, pavers, and the list goes on. Leprechaun Soft Wash is fully insured and uses biodegradable cleaning products. Plus, Leprechaun Soft Wash offers a spot-free warranty on roof cleanings. Call 751-2325. No more blimey roof stains with Leprechaun Soft Wash. 751-2325. Yeah, right. Tomorrow, today's Mardi Gras, right? And, to, and tomorrow is uh, the yeah. first day. First day of Lent. Lent and yeah. Ash Wednesday and all that. By the way, Carol Ann has established or, or set up a Facebook page for this show, and uh, I love to mention it because it's a great way for you to share with Carol Ann and the rest of us um, whatever's growing in your garden, or maybe you went on a trip to the Canapa is it Canapa? Canapa, yeah. Gardens, or maybe one of the Epcot Gardens or something like that. You want to uh, post something on there? The other, the other day, Carolyn, by the way, mm-hmm. I was going to take a picture of Doug's neighbor's flowers. Oh, and Doug okay. only lives like a block away from Right, her. right. But she's got some flowers that are growing that are really, really pretty. Uh-huh. And Robin pointed out that I had one that okay. used, used to grow over the place where I buried my cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't remember. Maybe she can come in and tell me what it was. But it's a real pretty, hardy flower. Right. Almost, almost looks, it reminds me of a lily. It's got that thickness to the flower. Okay. Well, and it might be. It, um, or it could be an amaryllis. Is that what it was, Robin? Was that an amaryllis? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. She's she, she's doing things. Yeah. But yeah, it could be could be an amaryllis because they're they're blooming now or they're beginning to bloom in different areas. Was that an amaryllis in Doug's neighbor's yard that you said I had? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's I figured. You're pretty good. Wow. Yeah. Just based on what I said, huh? That's yeah. Well, just knowing Describing what's blooming it like now. Describing like a lily. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and what's blooming now? Of course, the other day I was not at work, and and someone I got texted a picture of a of a leaf, <laughs> one leaf. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. I can't you know smell. move it around. I can't yeah. I can't smell it. Yes, because I do. And 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 the customer apparently. Th- Thought it would be possible to identify the tree by one leaf. Well, uh, isn't that possible sometimes? See, I, w- I would have made it the same would, I mean, maybe on a magnolia tree, yes, but on most, many of them, because some trees can have leaves that are very similar, and it'll depend on how they grow, if they're opposite on the stem, or right. alternate on the stem, or do they whirl around the stem, um, you know, oh, do wow. they have a scent, are they serrated, are they smooth, uh, like you say, the thickness of the leaf, uh, or the, you know, does this thing flat? Have you ever seen it? It just makes it. I mean, you probably can. You someone can take that leaf and go, oh yeah, that's a such and such. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, not always. It's not easy. Not. I mean, yes, a holly. You bring me a holly leaf, and I'll go. Yes, that's a holly. Uh, if you bring me a couple leaves off the Indian hawthorn, yes, I can probably tell you it's an Indian hawthorn. Oh, that'd be a fun, uh, fun it's, thing it's, to do one day. I, I we've done, or I have done, and master gardeners do it. 4-H kids do it, where they actually do a plant ID um, quiz competition right, right, kind of right, thing, right. and it is by one leaf. Or just a flower, one flower off right, of it, right. or a seed pod of them. And uh, has anybody ever brought you something and asked you what kind of a tree does this come from? And you realized, okay, let me think of an example that it didn't come from the tree at all, but it was, but. It, Okay, like Spanish moss. Oh, yeah. It doesn't really come from a tree. No, no. But if somebody didn't know better, they might bring it to you and say, what kind of a tree is this? Because I I got it off of a tree. Right. I don't really get it. Everybody seems to think that the Spanish moss and the ball moss and the other mosses and the lichens and things like that are all killing their trees. But they're not because they're not parasitic. So I don't think I've gotten... 
have gotten that. I think I may have gotten something like that, thinking it was the flower. Someone was thinking that it was uh-huh, the flower uh-huh. off the tree. Yeah. You know. uh-huh. But um, so, what, what is the history of the no, Spanish moss? Why is it called Spanish moss? Do they have a lot of that the, in Spain? No, I think it was just probably discovered, probably by the Spaniards. I'm oh, not okay. sure. Well, no, I don't know. Or that they were the first ones to utilize it for something. I don't know. Uh. But it's one of those. Uh, one of those kind of things. It in, it in itself is not killing the tree. I wonder what they call what? it in Spanish. Like in somebody who's from Puerto Rico, what do they call Spanish moss? Do they call it Espanol moss or something? I have no idea. <laughs> I'd have to ask somebody. <laughs> it's got to be somebody listening who speaks That's Spanish. It, that was, yeah. Tell, what do you call Spanish moss? What would you, you call Spanish, Spanish Spanish moss if you? Is it English? Is it English moss? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I don't believe so. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you get off on strange things there, Larry. Um, do I? Yes, sometimes you do. I want to mention, you, know, we, you handed me when I came in today that we've got quite a prize package today. You do have today. a good Quite package, a prize yeah. package today. We have not only our Bob Wines $20 gift certificate for Bob Wines Nursery uh, worth $20 of plant material only. It's not good for mulches, pine straw, and it's not good on seasonal um, items. Then we have two um, coupons, tickets, cards from Hooters, because Hooters is now open again over here behind. Uh, it's over on Twenty Seventh Avenue, right, right. Um, near the near the movie theater. We've got one that's free pickle, at, free fried pickle appetizer with any soft drink purchase, and another one that's good for a uh, half price appetizer anytime, any day. Excludes the buffalo uh, buffalo platter. Uh-huh. So that's something you got there. And then we've got two tickets to uh, Beautiful Moments Wedding and Events Expo that's coming up on March the 9th, which is Thursday. Thursday, March the 9th. Um, the tickets are worth $10 each. It's from 5 to 8.30 p.m. And you figure this is that time of year. There's weddings going on, events, right, graduations, right, right. Um, sweet 16s, baby showers, bridal showers. And they have all your different things that you can you can rent there to make your event a right, special event. Right. Of course, this one with the bridal events are going to um, event and wedding plan, or event planning, wedding planning, uh, different venues that are available to you catering uh cakes and confections uh photography lighting and enter you know entertainment and lighting uh your linen rentals and tents uh floral decor uh, formal wear bridal wear jewelry gifts transportation um all kinds of different stuff so if you've got you've got one of those events one of those big events a big graduation uh, a big retirement party uh maybe an annual event with your company that you've got might be a great event to go to right, you can right. get two tickets today if you're the one who gets these uh pair of tickets um, today for that event coming up this thursday so in order to win this you have next to thursday call right now the ninth call let's do it right now get do it, it right now sure. all right so you get the whole package if you call right now and tell caroline what you're giving up for lent Six two two nine six two two. There's no wrong answer. What, that's right. What are you giving up for Lent? If you tell, if you share that if with you're not, and if you're not giving up anything, that's still an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving up anything. There you go. I'm giving up, giving up. There you go. I quit <laughs> quitting. <No. laughs> All right, let me take a call at random. And uh, good morning. What are you giving up uh, for Lent? Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's see. Um, I'm not Catholic, but if I were. Um, I know my my in laws are Catholic. They give up meat on Fridays. Sure. There you go. So there yeah. you go. You've there got you go. the prize package. Hey. What's your first name? Hey. What's your first name? That's fantastic. My name is Diane. Diane, you've got it. And do you know where we are? Uh, uh, you guys are right there in the mall, aren't you? Right. Yep. Uh, yep. They just come and pick it up. It'll have your name on it. That sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Diane. you. All right. We'll be right back. Forty Second Street. That- Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The president says he may not fill hundreds of jobs in his administration because they're not necessary. Speaking to Fox and Friends ahead of his first speech before a joint session of Congress. Also commenting on leaks of the media and spokesperson Sean Spicer's attempts to crack down on them. He's a fine person. I would have done it differently. I would have gone one-on-one with different people. Uh, and we don't have a major leak 
process here. We have a major leak process in government. The president expected to lay out his legislative agenda tonight. Probes underway in several states after bomb threats to Jewish community centers. We need to start coming together and realize Jewish, Christian, Muslim, whatever your religion is, we are all one. We are all Americans. An instructor at the Katz JCC in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and her economy grew at a 1.9% rate in the fourth quarter. Fox News, we report, you decide. HelloFresh delivers recipes and ingredients for a home-cooked meal in around 30 minutes. Like this recipe. Start with a working couple. Add two demanding jobs. Mix all too well. Receive HelloFresh delivery. Trim off temptation to order pizza. Follow step-by-step -step recipe until holy ravioli. You can add mushroom ravioli gratin to your resumes. Fist bump and enjoy. Delicious ingredients you'll love to eat. Simple recipes you'll live to cook. HelloFresh. Get cooking. Get $20 off your first delivery plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash radio. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh, honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call GEICO, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Bad counsel. Hi, my name is Erica Olstein. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. So, you used to be wired, now you're just tired. You used to be thin, but now you're the heaviest you've ever been. You don't necessarily always have to take a med if your thyroid is playing dead. If you have a thyroid disorder, an acupuncture visit may be in order. Come visit me, your primary care physician, Erica Olstein, at A Better You Healthcare. Call me at 352-615-5566. Tick-tock, the days fly by, and refined tax season is upon us once again. Not to worry, though. With a reputable CPA firm on your side, you can rest assured that all of your needs will be handled in a professional and thorough manner. Robson, Scribner & Stewart is just that firm. They're there for their clients year-round, not just during tax season, to handle your needs and answer any questions you may encounter. At Robson, Scribner & Stewart, there is no client too small or too large. Their expertise ranges from the single individual to the largest of corporations. Get your return prepared by a professional who will use their years of experience to ensure that your tax returns outcome will leave you in the best possible position. Call them today at 694-4184. Robson, Scribner & Stewart. They're there for you today. Again, that number is 694-4184. Time is of the essence, so don't delay. 694-4184. Ocala Business Leaders Incorporated is a group of independent local firms providing a wide range of quality goods and services. Each firm strives to maintain the highest level of professional integrity and 100% customer satisfaction. When you're looking for goods and services, call a member of the Ocala Business Leaders and we are confident you will be pleased with the results. If you are interested in becoming a member of the Ocala Business Leaders, join us at the Ocala Elks Lodge, 25th Avenue in Ocala, any Wednesday at 7 a.m. and enjoy a breakfast on us. For more information, check OcalaBusinessLeaders.com. Radio gets results. Yeah, I, I love WOCA because they're fun to listen to. They're Larry and Robin start the day fresh and they're funny. They're informative. They've also helped us with Therapeutic Riding Association, getting us players for our golf tournament fundraisers. And so they help the kids that are handicapped, make our community a better place to live. And they've been a very good partner for us. We wouldn't want to have it any other way. Radio gets results. Millions of people have type 2 diabetes and many have trouble keeping their blood sugar under control. If you're one of them, learn about the Merck Type 2 Diabetes Study. This clinical research study is evaluating the safety and effectiveness of an investigational medication for type 2 diabetes. Those who qualify will receive the study medication, study-related medical examinations, and laboratory tests at no cost. To see if you're eligible, call Dr. Larry Popeil with Magnolia Research Group 352-351-8088. That's 352-351-8088. I do like the bumper music today. I do. You like that? I do. That's fun. All right. Uh, welcome back to uh, In the Garden with Carol Ann. Carol Ann Baldwin is your hostess, and uh, we got a phone call. Fantastic. Have a phone call. Good morning. You're on there with Carol Ann. Gotta go. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 
My camellias have finished blooming. Okay. Is this the time to cut them back? Yes. Yes, if you need to prune them, to shape them, remove dead wood, get the size down, yes, this is the time of year to do that now that they're they're finished blooming, and you can also fertilize them. Okay, well, these have never been pruned. Okay. Uh, They're about 10 years old. I don't know how far back you take them. Um, The the general uh, rule of thumb is uh, no more than one-third at any given time. Okay. So if they're up to six feet, if they were up to six feet, you could take two feet of them off and bring them back down to four feet. Okay. These are only about five feet and a half or okay. something like that. Okay. So not real big, but you, yeah, if you want to, you know, go ahead and shape them up. You need to take a, you know, a foot or so off of there. You can, you can do that. Okay. Also, the other shrubbery, mm-hmm. uh, we've been away. I'm not sure who are, uh, uh, when these bushes were trimmed last, uh, we have someone doing the uh, landscaping, okay. uh, the long way and so forth. So anyhow, uh, the, the, the shrubbery, like the boxwood, uh, are really have a big flush of uh, green growth now. Right. Is it okay to trim them back now? Um, if it were any other winter, I would tell you no, but yes, you can go ahead and do that. Actually, we are right about here. We're at the end of February now. Yes, you can go ahead and prune those, take it down a little further than uh, what you want them to get to at this year, and that way you'll get nice new growth, uh, opens up that center so some light can get in there too. Okay, that's true of all the shrubbery pretty much. Yes, you yes, sure. right. Ahead. Yeah, let your azaleas finish blooming. If you have azaleas, let those finish blooming before you prune them. Of course, I've seen some people have just kind of cleaned up the outer parts of those, and there's still some blossom left with those. Um, but I usually let them bloom real good and then you know, whack them way back. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the call. And the phone line is open, by the way, if you want to call Carol Ann. The number is 622-9622. I see some people looking online, Carol Ann. So let me give the area code. If you're out of the area, it's 352. So the full number, 352-622-9622. And it's gardening and everything related and sometimes and sometimes unrelated and, exactly um but but to keep related with the garden is that not this weekend but the following weekend is the master gardener spring garden festival and i did finally i got a list of who the uh speakers will be and we've got some uh some really good ones and and anybody who knows um luis camacho he does our talk on growing tropical crops. This year, he's actually going to do that twice. He's going to do that in English on Saturday uh, Saturday morning at 11.30, and then he's going to do that on Sunday at 12.30 in Spanish. Wow. So if That's anyone's impressive. had a harder time maybe trying to get in the most knowledge, you know, just because of a language issue, go ahead and, and you know, you might come on both of those but uh he's fantastic with all of our tropicals that will actually grow here in central florida uh wow which i've is never fantastic. heard of somebody doing that that's a good yeah. idea good morning you're on there with caroline uh yeah i was calling to uh tell you about the spanish moss yeah it's called that okay um because when the uh Pakistans stores and all of them were coming over the beer the the spanish moss reminded them of their beards Ah, gotcha. So that's why they call it Spanish moss. Oh. That makes sense. Wow, they that must have had ugly sense. beards. Well, long, yeah. long beards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you figure you're on, you're on a ship for months at a time. Right, you know? yeah. Yeah, you probably are ready for a shave <laughs> or a trip. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I never knew that before. That's a good, hey, that's a good reason. I like it. All right, thank you. All right. Have you day. Yeah. the Viking moss? We should don't have a Viking moss. Huh? No, no. Well, those guys, I think, came in further north. They were, they were too far north. They were up yeah, in Connecticut. They, uh, uh, Minnesota. <laughs> oh, I think. Oh, oh, Minnesota. Wow, way inland. Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot about <laughs> oh, that. That was that was just horrible. Um, but no, we've uh, on the speakers that we've got this year. We do have a couple of. I think we've got a couple of different ones. We have uh, anybody looking for those essential garden tools. We've got uh, Michael Sleeper from AgPro Equipment coming in. You know, talking about some of those essential tools you need in your garden. Um, we have Dr. Bill Lester, fertilizers and equipment calibration. So that's kind of into the technical part of, of the landscape. Uh, Master Gardener Jim uh, Jardin doing installing a micro irrigation system, which um, I wish I could get Mr. Landscaper to come on board and advertise with us, but they uh, sell their products uh, at. Uh, 
at Lowe's as well as at uh, the, through our Master Gardeners. And there's some new products out on the market, and they will be here, be at the Master Gardener Festival with their with their items. And so it's you know fantastic with. Um, you know, vegetable gardens, herb gardens, flower beds, your whole landscape can benefit from micro-irrigation. Um, jo Leite Vidal, she is a longtime uh, Marion County resident. You know, she's been here 44 years, Master Gardener for the last 13, and a science teacher, uh, you know, for many years. And she will be doing organic vegetable gardening. Um, it must have plants for Central Florida with Brooke Moffis, which is a residential horticultural agent within Lake County. So we do borrow our agents and people from different counties to bring information uh, forward to everyone. Uh, Florida Friendly Landscape, which is a big program here and well throughout the state. Um, encouraging people to put the right plant in the right place grouping plants together by water needs and other growing needs and so we have design ideas with the florida friendly landscaping by taylor clem and taylor clem's a, a phd candidate at uf's department of environmental horticulture and so has been working for um, in sustainable design for like the past 12 years um so that's a you know pretty good background there on, on figuring out, you know, trying to so for, to listen to somebody doing the right plant in the right place. Um, Master Gardener Helen Ogren, Ogren will be doing gardening for birds and butterflies. Uh, Jim Nash will be doing tips for successful uh, uh, vegetable gardens. Uh, Sheena uh, Shagel will be doing ideas for small gardens. Uh, uh, David Holmes, our county extension director, will be doing the program on choosing uh, a landscape uh, and choosing and la a landscape or pest control professional um which is a, you know that one I've been talking about. If you want to right, you need yeah. some help trying to select that professional to come in and help you with your yard and landscape, he's the one. That, that's a program you're going to want to see. If you're doing your own lawn and things like that, we have Dr. Lori Trenholm from the University of Florida do, caring for your Florida uh, lawn. We have Donna Goodwin doing uh, growing Vanda orchids, which the Vandas are really pretty cool because those are the ones hanging out of the trees. The roots are exposed. They're gorgeous. And um, I will be doing a program on pest control product options uh, that are out there, not just your chemical stuff, but some of the... Um, organic items if there's anything new on the you know that you can buy basically locally not so much of what might be available online but something that you can actually walk into a, a brick and mortar store around here locally and buy so all kinds of different stuff to do on that uh, on the spring festival speaking of equipment my lawnmower has started up great it's been around forever yeah yeah. I don't know anything with it. It's got an oldest rope in, in in fact it's right. got two ropes tied together. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah, it might but be might be time for a new rope, but <laughs> I, I don't know. It just seems to work. I was I knock on wood. I don't want it to not work. Right, right. Good morning, you're on there with Carol Ann. Good morning, Carol Ann. Good morning, Sonny. When I uh was uh, living uh, up in Long Island myself. I used to go around and like we planted tomatoes and the cucumbers and radishes and stuff. And one sure. of the biggest things I had results with was uh, mixing. Uh, you have to have hot water when you initially do it. Mixing garlic in the hot water. Uh huh. And uh, letting it like cook. Right. And then when it cools off, spraying uh, tomato plants and all the other plants that we were planting. And it seemed to keep the bugs away, especially the uh, those tomato worms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who, who put a lot into that of, of trying to repel the insects um, before they get to them. Um, I've never had real good luck doing it. But, I mean, some people, I think you got to really stay on with that in order for that to be real effective. Um, I know I've planted basil with tomatoes because they say the basil has a strong enough scent that it masks the tomato plant scent right. from the tomato hornworms, too. And that did seem to help some as well. Well, anyway, uh, we used to do uh, a lot of that stuff. I forget some of the other natural uh, uh, remedies but 
some of this stuff we get on the ground then would actually keep little critters away. Sure, sure. And the garlic does too. I mean, it's a, it's a sensory, it's a scent kind of thing. A lot of times we'll take and, and take a couple of hot peppers, a couple cayenne peppers, run them through the blender um, and throw that in with your, you know, and steep and make your tea um, of the garlic and the hot pepper. And again, that does that whole thing. It's more sensory to, um, you know, squirrels and, and uh bunnies and, well, and some of the, the insect uh, pests. The other thing that, uh, you know, when I was living up there, you had the, uh, the four seasons, so your Correct. growing season wasn't all that... Right, they bad. didn't have as and much of a chance time, to find uh, them. You know... <laughs> Nature took care of the critters and the bugs. Sure, sure, sure did. All right, have a good day, everybody. Thank All you right, thanks for, for calling, program. Sonny. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Thank you, Sonny. Thank All you, right. WOCA. Oh, wow. Thank you. And we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, partly sunny, very warm and humid with a stray shower along the coast. The high 81 at the coast, 87 inland. And patchy clouds Tuesday night, maybe some fog around late at night and into early Wednesday. Low 63 to 67. Later Wednesday, sunshine, some clouds and very warm high 82 in the coast to 88 well inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Come to the 4th Annual Habitat Strawberry Festival on March 4th, 2017 at the McPherson Government Complex. The festival's goal is not only to have vendors, food, a car show, a kid's zone, live entertainment featuring one flight up, a lip sync competition, police versus fire department pie eating contest, and all things strawberry. But to also raise funds to build a habitat home for a family in our community. Check out the website, habitatocala.org, and follow the link. The Habitat for Your Human Strawberry Festival is March 4th with breakfast served at 7.30. Free parking, free admission. Sunrise Automotive, this is Matt. Hey, Matt, it's Dan. Hey, Dan. Listen, we're going to be doing some traveling, and I need to make sure the car is in good shape. Why don't you just bring it on by? Let us check it out. We can check all your belts, your hoses, your tires, all your fluids. In out of town, is that up north? It and is. cold? Yep. Okay. Let's check your antifreeze. Also, let's make sure your washer fluid has got alcohol so it doesn't freeze up north. That, that makes for a rotten day. And let's check your air pressure in your tires. Let's look at your brakes. Make sure everything is safe and secure there. Let's go through it and just make sure everything is ready to go on the road. You do for an oil change? Yep. Whenever you come in to get your oil change, we always check your belts, your hoses, all your lights. We go through and make sure that everything is working properly. We check all your fluid levels. We do that every time you come in to Sunrise Automotive. So just call you back at this number? Yeah, just give me a call back at 690-1993 whenever you're ready to come in. And you can drop it off. Leave it with us. Whatever is most convenient for you. Look forward to seeing you at Sunrise Automotive. All right, 72 degrees. Looks like a beautiful Tuesday out there. Let's return to Carol Ann Baldwin in the garden with Carol Ann. It's supposed to be Mardi Gras music right there. It sounds like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got a little jazz going. <laughs> there we go. That works. Yeah, we're, we're back in the garden. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to? I was going to add something, and I forgot my... Forgot I just train of I thought. forgot to, I, the I just Gras music like, tree No, walk. I should have stuck my finger in my ear and held it in, held that idea in there. <laughs> um Oh, what was it? I I thought I had something here that I wanted to mention and I've forgotten completely about it. Uh, oh, that's terrible. By the, by the way. Oh, no, I guess I was going to say, those who know me and know how long I've been there at Extension, and, and a lot of them are listeners, they're people you know, I've known for years, they were master gardeners, uh, either when I got there or after I came in. Um, this time of year was always a special time to a... a for a few of my mentors, but one was was Bill Miranda, and I don't know if you remember Bill because I know when I used to substitute for Suzanne, he and I actually used to come on. Did you really? Uh, yeah, and he passed many years ago, but the Spring Festival used to always um, be his thing. That he was always wanted to make sure that the presentation of the gardens was perfect and and he's stressed and everything else and i just hope that this this spring festival you know mm. this is my 20th year um i think this would have been his 21st or 22nd i can't remember if he was one or two years ahead of mine um but I, I hope he's looking down and, and gives approval. Looks mm. like our weather, I think, is supposed to be fantastic for that weekend. Um, so we're hoping maybe maybe all the Master Gardeners who have passed are su- going to shine down on us and uh, give us 
give us some good weather and a good turnout. That creates quite a visual in my mind. Yeah. Like I can picture this like amazing painting or something yeah with with master gardeners giving us good, <laughs> yeah, good yeah, weather yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah no rain no no heavy winds uh let's have a good year so it is amazing and i mean all that stuff grows oh sure i could probably live without buying any food if i just walked around my neighborhood and took people and bananas sn- <laughs> <laughs> bananas as long as you don't mind bananas and oranges huh? <laughs> but no there's a lot of stuff and there are more and more people um especially those either with young families or or um younger grandparents out there who are planting their landscapes or changing their landscapes into more and more edible items um you know instead you know because a lot of your edibles have very pretty flowers or very unusual flowers you look at the banana tree and they have very unique flower on there that is that's you know kind of fun and you get bananas okay uh, i have a question about that flower yeah First of all, is the flower the big purple thing that hangs down underneath it? I think that's actually, that's part of the flower. The whole thing, I think, is the flower. But the banana comes from that little tiny other thing that's underneath there. So what is that big purple thing? I think just a, just the hood or, like I said, a portion of the flower. I mean, every flower has different... Does uh, it attract, like, a bee or something to help pollinate it? What, what, I think how? it offers protection to that flower while it's you I mean, know how, for the for the bees and the pollinators to come up under it's it's going to stay so does the banana plant have a sex is there or is there a male fl- uh, banana um banana no i think it's all within the same plant okay so within the, the part flowers, that gets yeah. the other part it's going to be in there and that the bee flies in or something flies in and and does their you know collects its pollen and such like that and moves pollen around in there and then sends it now why yeah. did God do that? Why didn't he just make it happen? Why does a bug have to get into that thing? Well, because we just need everybody involved. So it, takes, it takes a village. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask. I have so many questions. He's Dude, when, you get, when you get up there, you're going to ask. Yeah. You get there, he gives you and he's, one. And he's going to go, oh, Lord, Larry, I saw this coming. You got one question. One. You better pick out a good one. Why? And then how are you going to tell the rest of us the answer? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You, I'll just have to carry on. Yeah. Whatever I'm doing. That's it. Or somebody you you. Yeah. That, that way, all the all the questions of the world will be answered, but nobody will be back, be able to come back and tell us the answers. I know. So it could you know be all of the questions, all of those mysteries of the world, <laughs> have been revealed or will be once you get to heaven. But then, you don't get the chance to come ho- come de- back and tell and anybody. Tell us, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why there's still mysteries. Well, you, of the you know, world. they say you get a mansion when you die. Yeah, I want a cottage. Yeah, I don't, I'd, I'd rather have you. Yeah, just give I me don't a little. I want a big gigantic place. Yeah, give give you, me a place on. A what little, am I gonna do with it? Give me a tent and an air mattress on a lake or something. Yeah. No, I'll get at least a cottage. Yeah, a cottage. That's tent cool. and an air mattress. Yeah, so long as I'm young enough. <laughs> You'll always be young. That's, <laughs> yeah, isn't that's that the deal? <laughs> yep. The deal. But, uh, stay young. No, but that's a that's a good yeah. It's always good thoughts. Um, no, do do set your calendars. Make sure it's there uh, for the spring festival on the 11th and 12th of March. Um, you've got the wedding expo and wedding and events e- expo at um, Beautiful Moments Party Rentals and Supplies coming up. Not this Thursday. My my error on that. It is next Thursday, March the 9th. And if you uh, give them a call, you can, I guess, get your tickets that way. Because I guess uh-huh. going online doesn't tell you that you are going to pay $10 per ticket uh, to go to that. And then what the Strawberry Festival is this Saturday. Yes. And so the is the Springs Festival is this weekend also. So there's all kinds of things to do in our community get out and do something get out get some fresh air and by Uh, the by the way um you can order your strawberries online oh can you yeah you got a flat i don't remember how much it costs and all that and i'm just i'm only mentioning it to tell you if you do it now online it'll save you a lot of trouble on saturday right because it'll it'll be waiting for you they'll have a note somewhere that you paid for. that's yours is already there that they won't run out before it's right it's like reserving your box of strawberries which is nice and it all all the proceeds go into a good cause of habitat for humanity of helping to build a house for someone less fortunate within our own community and that's and it's and i like habitat for the sake that it is uh sweat equity Yes. Put into you have it, to work. and yep. yes, you do and have you do to have work to for pay. it. You do have to pay. You are paying, and you are, and you you're working for it. So it means it means more than just being handed something. Here you go. Here's a place to stay. It is it is your home, 
Right. And um, anybody who happens to be a recipient of that, if they want some information on how to grow vegetable gardens and things like that, they can always come to the extension office and get information on that right. when they want right. to add a garden or what to plant to make more of an edible or sustainable uh, landscape in their yard of p- planting fruit trees and how to care for them. Because uh, there is more work in in adding those kind of things to a landscape than just, say, sticking a, a holly tree um or some shrubbery in where okay you prune them a couple times a year and that's it you know throw some water to them occasionally and you know fruit trees you know that because you're getting that benefit of having the fresh produce in your landscape i have a lot of friends who i've never met they're right they're oh, called yeah. facebook friends yep. Yep. <laughs> i got a bunch of them so, too. so one of my facebook friends i don't even know how i know this person you've forgotten over the years yeah i don't know but anyway they they showed a picture of their old uh wash line in the back the, okay. the thing that looks like an umbrella that's oh, like, oh yes yes the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah, the, and it's, uh, uh, it, they have st- strings or something hanging down okay and it's their growing uh, beans up the no uh, grapes oh okay They're it's their grapes. grape arbor nice yeah. nice Interesting. I thought well, that's an interesting. And now that's kind of neat because I wonder if they've got it open enough where you can maybe put your chairs and and, uh, and a little table it. and sit underneath in the cool. It's got to be bugs in there, don't you think? Yeah, not really. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people do that. Do an arbor over and make a little seating area. And if you're doing grapes, you're getting some fruit. Um, I'm not sure how well they fruit if you're doing them like that and you're not pruning. Uh, on an annual uh-huh. basis, but they grow so quickly that if you prune them, you know, where, when you're supposed to, you'll have your shade back over in so the, in the first, spring and summertime. Your first thought was it. it was beans. Would beans grow better? Well, like, would that well, be beans, easier? Beans would just, it would be an annual, uh, you know, thing because they're not as heavy. Oh, okay. I guess my thought was that how heavy grapes uh, are. Uh, 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 you I know, don't they, know. You know, that's, usually that's we uh, uh, have like a... a four inch three or four inch post holding up the cable going around but if they're using it as a trellis uh-huh. kind of thing up and over or an arbor um it probably you know what give I'll it do? i should have thought of this i will share it on the uh in the garden facebook there page you go. There that you way go. you'll be able to, i'll be able to show everybody who's, there been, you go. who's listening to us mm-hmm. uh, and if i could just mention that go to uh if you're on facebook make sure you hook up within the garden the carolyn the carolyn's page and you can share it. Last week I put two on there, right? Yeah, put I put one of my I put my bananas and and I put and this you, plant and out you here. Put that, right, you put the little bottle brush out right, there, right, right. and yeah. And uh, the other week, uh, Kathy uh, had her spider webs, and I'm looking uh, to see if there's something I haven't seen. And I, I didn't get a picture on the last time. Last week I was here, and I was when I was sitting in the car. When I first got here, and the parking lot was just full of robins, but somebody walked through, so there weren't any. Uh, they they took off and didn't come back. Uh. But there's all kinds of different things going on. The spring is. I'm going to say spring. Spring sp- sprung. Oh, uh, mine is the newest picture. Could be. Yeah, mine is the, the newest. Yeah, the newest. Yours photo. is the newest yeah, post. post. Yeah, but yours is the newest picture. Well, I'll so. have to take some more. There you go. Well, and, I've, and I've got a couple in here I need to, to post And on this too. is the time of year, right? This is when things start changing. This is when things are blooming. This is when things are changing. Our ve- our produce, our vegetables are just now coming in. Uh, I mean, you may have some things um, that are from the, the fall garden, the cool season garden, and, and be ready to, you know, to put pictures of. And we'd like to see your harvest of flowers as well as vegetables. So have a happy... Mardi Happy Gras. Fat, fat Tuesday. Happy Fat Tuesday. Happy Fat Tuesday. Get a piece of that king cake, right? I, I, I think I will. Everybody thank, have a great day. Thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Oh, we'll, you're we'll, welcome. we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source.